We're gonna start installing our in-floor radiant heat components and getting ready to hook up our outdoor boiler. All of the components we ordered finally showed up. I'm not saying we have everything we need here now because I'm sure when we're hooking everything up, there's gonna be one or two things that I'm gonna be lacking. But I'm hoping I have all of the big stuff that we have to order. There's gonna be a little bit of parts and pieces, I'm assuming like connections we're gonna to need to get that I didn't think of. But we got all the big stuff. We're hooking up an outdoor wood boiler made by Heatmaster and going to get everything hooked up from the wood boiler to inside is inch and a quarter pecs and going around looking I found it's very hard to get inch and a quarter pecs pieces at least locally in our area. Lowe's Home Depot don't stock them. We have two plumbing supply stores. They don't stock this stuff so I had to go online and order it. Most of the stuff online took a week to two weeks to come in. So I don't know if it's just with everything going on right now that there's a shortage of that stuff or if inch and a quarter is hard to get anyways. So one of the things I had to order in was our hot water heater. The reason I had to order in the hot water heater is I wanted at least a 50 gallon hot water heater. We ended up getting an 80, but I wanted it to have side ports. From doing all the research I've done, if you have side ports, you don't need to have a circulator pump to fill your hot water tank and keep it nice and hot. It'll stay flowing with natural convection if you have side ports. If you have <clears throat> top ports, when you're going to put in your heat exchanger, it won't have a natural convection because you have to go up and then down so it doesn't work. It would work with a circulator pump, but us being off grid, if we can get away with not using a circulator pump to keep the hot water in a hot water tank circulating, I don't want it if I don't have to. So that's why we waited to get this tank in. It came in damaged on the bottom the other day. We had to order this online and a freight company delivered it and the truck driver said, hey, it's damaged. We made some notes. I haven't opened the box yet. So let's get this opened up, see how it looks inside. And not looking damaged, which is a good thing. The only thing I don't know, let me get it out of the box and I'll show you. So for our hot water heater, we ended up going with the A.O. Smith Circrex. It is the Sun 80 gallon. So this will hold 80 gallon and it's sun, so it's also for solar. So if you want to have like a solar heater come in, you have extra side ports to hook in your hot water from a solar heater or extra top ports for the same thing. We want the side ports to hook up to our outdoor boiler. It is 240 volts, 4,500 watts electric water heater. We don't plan on hooking up the electricity to it right now. If we need to, we will. But my hope is, is our outdoor boiler will be able to run all of our hot water needs and this will be our storage tank to the hot water heater. Two reasons we went with an electric hot water heater. The first reason is, is it's cheaper to buy an electric hot water heater tank than it is just to buy a storage tank. I don't know why that is, but it's cheaper to get a whole unit like this than just the storage tank that doesn't have all the electrical components. Number two is if we ever decide to shut off our outdoor wood boiler in the summertime, when we have plenty of solar, we could be heating our hot water with the electricity produced from our solar panels. So I just always like to have backups. I'm not gonna hook it up right now, but if we need to, we can. So we need to figure out the layout for everything in our mechanical closet. And also while we're installing this stuff, I also need to remember that our well pump needs to go inside of the mechanical closet. So 
So the box was damaged right down in this area, so I don't know if there's supposed to be a lever to shut this on and off or not. If there is, I'll have to get a new handle for it. If not, it looks like you can use a regular screwdriver, so I'll have to go online and see if it's missing a handle or not. But other than that, the tank looks good. All right, I have this two by six here just for mock-up so I can bolt my heat exchanger and figure out where I need it. And later on, we will move it. I'm a very visual person, so I need to mark everything up and have it in position to figure out what I need and everything. So I find this works best for me. I want to thank ButcherBox for sponsoring today's video. If you don't know what ButcherBox is, it's an online meat subscription. It's not just any old meat. It's delicious meat that's better for you and the planet. We've been using ButcherBox now for over six months, if not a year now. Time flies and it has been a while. We get a ButcherBox every month and we've never been disappointed with what we get in our package. So it's an online meat subscription. You go online, you pick the box you want, and you pick the cut meats that you want, and you can change them up every month. So if you wanna switch it up, you wanna get fish, chicken, pork, burger, steaks, lobster, you name it, you can go on there. Some of our favorites lately have been lobster, scallops, and shrimp. Oh, just talking about it makes me so hungry. And right now, ButcherBox is offering for new members, you're gonna receive two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, and a three pound plus pork butt in your first order. I don't know about you, but all that meat sounds delicious. We've had every cut there and it's always good. If you wanna try ButcherBox and get seven pounds of free meat in your first order, click our link in the video description down below. ButcherBox always promises high quality meat delicious 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, pork-raised, crate-free, and wild-caught seafood. If this is your first time signing up for ButcherBox and you wanna get seven pounds of free meat, click our link in the video description down below by January 20th, and you're gonna get it delivered right to your door. There's no more better convenience than that. I wanna thank ButcherBox for sponsoring today's video. If it wasn't for sponsors like ButcherBox and viewers like you, we wouldn't be able to do what we do here at London Acres. Now, let's get on with the build. I had to run out to this plumbing supply store and pick up a few other fittings that we're gonna need. Luckily they had them all in stock and I'm sure this won't be the last trip I gotta make there. Plumbing to me is always one of those things that takes some time and some head scratches. All right, so this is the first markup we have for the heat exchangers. I'm thinking I wanna change this. I don't wanna mount them over here. I'm thinking now I'll do them like this and something like this. So I have my two heat exchangers connected together. We're gonna have the inlet from the outdoor boiler coming in here, going through one 
heat exchanger over, up to the other, and then going back out. So I'm thinking right now, something like this, I'm gonna mark it uh, here and here. I'm trying to maximize our small little space. We're also gonna having a well pump over on this side. So I'm trying to maximize everything, but also keep in mind if we need to work on this system to make it so we can work on it. And if we need to add anything to the future that where it's easy to add on or to fix or replace things as life happens. I had to run out and get some more plumbing supplies and pick up our order of insulation that came in. This is sound deadening insulation to go between the walls for the upstairs bedrooms. It's tight quarters and we want to make sure both bedrooms are quiet from each other. And we also want to make sure that the walls for the powerhouse and the bathroom are insulated so there's not a lot of noise transfer in between those two rooms from the living room when we're recording. We just don't want those noises. I will say this heating project is one of those jobs that makes me want to quit. If I didn't want to know how everything in my house works, I would hire this out. But I want to know how all the components of our off-grid house work. And so that way if anything ever happens, we have any issues, I can fix them and I know what's going on. And it's just kind of nice to know how different systems work. So this radiant floor heating system, I don't want to say it's being a pain, but I'm being fussy. I want everything to look nice and neat and straight plumb and level as I can. And I wanna make sure I have all the right fittings and everything in there. So I'm taking my time and figuring out that to say, we're on day three. And in the first two days, we haven't got very far, but we're gonna get it and it'll, it'll look beautiful when we're all done. So I know I have said that I do not like rock wool insulation. This is rock wool insulation, but we got the Rocks Wool, the Rock Soul brand. The last time we did it, we used the Pink Panther brand and it was terribly dusty. So this time we got the Rock Wool, Rocks Wool brand. So I'm hoping that this stuff is a lot nicer. If not, I guess we're gonna find out. We're gonna get this cut open. We did get it pretty early. We don't need this right now, but nobody locally stocks the Rock Wool, Rock Soul insulation. They all stock that Pink Panther stuff, and I didn't like it. So I want to try the real stuff. So I ordered everything. So now it'll be here when we need it.
good. Cleaning. Ooh. Now I gotta give the fitting a nice cleaning. And we have some flux. It's a kind of cleaner from what I understand when you heat it up. If you know more about what the flux does, leave it in the comments down below. Then right. I'm using Map gas in my torch. From what I understand, the map gas is the hottest gas you can get like this. And the way I like to go ahead and solder is I like to heat up what I'm soldering. And then I take my solder on the opposite side. And when it starts drawing it in, I know it's hot enough. And I leave my solder on the back side and let it pull it all the way around to the front. From what I understand, that's supposed to bring it around to the front and suck it all down in. And if you do it that way, you shouldn't get any leaks. I'm not a professional plumber, by no means. I've done a little bit of soldering in my life and plumbing. If you guys know a better way or different tricks, leave in the comments down below. That should do it right there. Yep. So now it's pulling it around. I don't know if you can see it on camera. It pulls it all the way around to the front. There we go. So when I understand when you see it come around the front like that, that means that the solder's been sucked down all the way in the joint and it shouldn't leak. And I just like to clean it up with a little bit of flux. They're all dried nice. And these are gonna go on our circulator pumps. So we can go over to PEX. There we go.
So far, this has been the project that's taken the most amount of time, the most head scratching. And it doesn't seem like we're getting very far. We're getting it. It's just not going as fast as I hoped it would. We're trying to do work with a lot of little pieces in one little area. So we have our mixing valve. This is going to mix cold water from the return side of our heat exchange in with the hot water. So we're not putting in extremely hot water from the outdoor wood boiler into our radiant heat. So it's going to be coming from our heat exchanger over to our air scoop, down into the mixing valve, from the mixing valve down into circulating pump from the circulator pump to the check valve, and the check valve has to be 12 inches from the circulating pump, and I wanted to have some space in between, so that's why I have the check valve where it is, but I think I need to take this, bring my check valve down, and then bring my circulating pump down, and then I have more room between these two. I'm putting these two heat exchangers back to back, so that way they take up less room instead of having, not, if I didn't have them connected, we'd have to have inch and a quarter pipe going between them. This way we just have our inch and a half pipe threads connected and it just helps keep everything in a more combined area. So. We pressurized our pecs for the radiant heat to make sure we didn't get any holes in it. It's still holding pressure. And I need to release that pressure. All right, that's taken too long. Save this gadget and gadget for pressurizing stuff later on. So now we need to hook up our pecs to our manifolds. This is the return side, this is the supply side. I got a six unit manifold just in case we want to put heat upstairs. We could have two more, not zones, but we could have two more circuits to do the upstairs if we need to. I did forget. I have to run the plumbing from the greenhouse all the way over and across to the manifold before we put any water in here. So we'll get all this hooked up today, and then we'll have to run the radiant heat from the greenhouse over here. It comes with your manifold, and then you can get different adapters. I have adapters for going to uh, PEX A, and then I'm going to put caps on the two zones we're not using right now. They have a little rubber gasket in them. So we'll go one, two. All 
All right, and these are our fittings to go from a manifold to the PEX A PEX. You got a little O ring in them that'll seal them. fold off the supply one off for now while we hook up the return side so we'll have return return and return so this one will go like so And then that'll seal back up and tighten up on its own. couple of seconds and it starts to stiffen up and it's not going anywhere. Now we'll do the bottom.
I'm really happy with how this is all turning out right now. Everything's nice, level, straight, and plumb, except for this one little piece. We got a bit of an angle. I really don't see how we can do it any other way. I didn't want to drop the mixing valve any more lower to the circulator pump, because if we did that, we could have came down 90 and then back over 90. But we have a small distance to work with. Our circulator pump is gonna be 12 inches from our check valve. So that's why this is where it is. I didn't wanna to go too close with the check valve to the shut off, just in case we have any issues. I didn't wanna have it too close. So I'm trying just to work with what we have for space. Um, this will be the inlet for the hot water coming from the outdoor boiler. It'll come in, down, come over to this heat exchanger, go up and then go back out to the boiler. We were gonna continue working on this, but it's gotten extremely cold. It was negative 11 this morning. Today's high is negative one. It's supposed to get down to negative 14 tonight and be cold tomorrow and for a few days. Not the kind of weather I wanna be working on the outdoor boiler in, hooking everything out outside. And also, I'm a little hesitant to get the outdoor boiler hooked up when it's this cold because I gotta get water out there and if I don't have a fire going right away and it's this cold and it's water and this kind of temperatures don't mix. So, we'll, now I'm not sure if we're gonna continue with this tomorrow or what we're gonna go on to. We have plenty of other projects to go on to. I'd like to keep working here, but the cold weather, it's kind of putting a damper on some of the projects. So, I don't know, I gotta think about it tonight and we will see what we're gonna work on next. Mm -hmm. 